What up, AOK -okay Mafia? It's your boy Arda Kicks it just like that. We back with another one. Alright, y'all. So we got a video here today. This is the bizarre case of Kimberly Kessler. Bizarre case. I don't know. This is long, about 20 minutes long, so we're gonna be here a while. Y'all boys get us ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Um, we also have recovered your shoes that has Jolene's blood on your shoes. So I just want you to, if something happened that you didn't intend to happen, I want to talk to you about it. Tell me about it. I don't it. think you're an evil person. I don't think you're a mean person. I think you have done one hell of a job getting through the last 25 years. Um, so let shoes. me reply this way, and you may not like the answer. I would like legal counsel. Hey, you and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, we're going to take a look at the bizarre case of Kimberly Kessler. Really. This story begins with a completely different woman, however. Jolene Cummings, who went missing in May 2018. But don't worry, we'll get into that. The bizarreness of this story centers around a woman with the most mysterious past possible on purpose if that makes sense. All right, that's enough dilly-dallying. Let's get into it. Dang, she thick. She got some nice curves In on. the small town of Yulee, Florida, 34-year-old mother of tree Jolene Cummings went missing. Jolene Cummings was last seen Saturday, May 12th, 2018 when she was leaving her shift at Tangle's Hair Salon. She was supposed to meet with her ex-husband the next day, which would have been Mother's Day and her birthday to pick up her children, but she never showed. She was officially reported missing the following Monday, the 14th of May, by her mother, Anne. Mm. When I step outside the shop, you can see uh, right behind me, as the search continues for Jolene Cummings' body, a makeshift memorial continues to grow right outside the Tangles Hair Salon shop. You can see many people have come to stop by and lay plans, flowers, balloons, and handwritten letters to Jolene. Now, we've also been hearing from those who knew Jolene best, her best friends from high school. They say she, they describe her as just being an all-around great person. They say she was an inspiration, she was vibrant, and she loved being a mother. The county police department, they searched the nearby woods, they put out as much information as they could, trying to see if anybody knew where she was or what happened to her. The last person she was known to be with was her co-worker in Tangles, Jennifer Seibert. In a huge coinky dink, Jennifer Seibert missed her next shift at the hair salon. Or rather, she didn't just miss it. You see, when the detectives who were investigating whatever happened to Jolene, they went to Tangles to speak to the owner and, um, you know, do, uh, do detective work. While they were there, the owner was on the phone to Jennifer while she was in to start her shift in Tangles. Mm -hmm. The owner was chatting away with her and he was like, oh, hey, detectives are here. They want to they wanna speak to you. You were the last person, um, you know, to see her or one of the last people to see her. She was working with you the day she disappeared. Maybe you can, um, you know, let them know what you know. Right. While the owner was telling her this, that the detectives, they wanted to speak with her, Jennifer was pulling into the Tangles parking lot. She then pulled the hell back out and booked it. On Monday, May 14th, we received a report of a missing person, Jolene Rebecca Cummings, age 34, from her mother, Ann Johnson. Jolene worked at Tangles Hair Salon. She worked all day Saturday, May the 12th. Okay. And was supposed to get off work around 5 p.m. Sure. No one has seen or heard from her since. Mm. The last person who had supposedly seen Jolene was another hairstylist who also worked on Saturday, May the 12th. This hairstylist had only worked at Tangles around a month or so. The salon was closed on Sunday and Monday. The salon was supposed to open back up on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. So NCSO investigators were there to talk to this person to see if she had any information as to the whereabouts of Jolene. Okay. She failed to show up for work, and the address that she gave the owner of the shop where she was supposed to be living was a bogus address. 
Jolene's vehicle was then found parked in the local Home Depot on the 16th of May. But no sign of Jolene, 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 Jolene. There were no fingerprints or blood found inside the car either. Hmm. Then the police reviewed the security footage that showed where the car was parked. Right. Maybe they could see who uh, who left it there. And they did. It was someone else, not Jolene, who left the car there at 1am and walked off. This person was dressed in all black, covert-like. We found some camera footage that showed Jolene's vehicle being parked around 1.17am Sunday morning. The video showed the driver sit there for a few minutes and then get out. We were hoping to see Jolene get out of that vehicle. But who do you think it was? The Tangles hairstylist, who was supposedly the last person to see Jolene. Mm. During an investigation of the salon, a large amount of blood was found, including on the walls, chairs, cabinets, and sink drain. Blood was also found on a bleach bottle and mop at the salon. That's crazy, like, blood, blood, there's something so special about blood that even when you use certain type of products to clean it up, you still be seeing that there's, there's still residue there to prove that the blood was there. It's crazy. Blood is something unique, I swear. They discovered this, of course, using luminol. It wasn't uh, readily visible. Jennifer was later found three counties away, hiding at a truck stop living in her car and was brought in for questioning. They ended up arresting her based upon the surveillance video. They deemed it was her that drove and parked Jolene's car outside the Home Depot. And she was arrested for Grand Theft Auto. And they transported her back to Nassau County where the case had taken place. When Jennifer was arrested, she had injuries on her face, scratches. But she said it was from a motorcycle accident. Not like somebody had clawed at her face or anything, or that the area where she and Jolene were last working together was covered in blood. Nothing to do with that. It was a motorcycle accident, of course. Two days later, the police held a press conference saying that they believed that Jolene was... She wasn't alive anymore, wherever she was. Through our investigation, we have obtained evidence which we are not releasing at this time, which leads us to believe Jolene is not alive. Hmm. So at this point, we have a missing mother of three, the last person who was... And why do they believe that? Obviously because the all the blood that they found. Working with her went on the run after the police started investigating her disappearance. And the place those two people were working on the day Jolene vanished was covered in blood. I wonder what happened. Exactly. So pretty straightforward, right? Wrong. This is where things get wacky. Jennifer Seibert? Never heard of her. She's not who she says she is. A tr chilling premonition from Nassau, from a Nassau County mother, Jolene Cummings, who went missing last May. The woman Cummings was talking about is Kimberly Kessler, also known by her fake name, Jennifer Seibert. Kessler has been charged with Cummings' murder and has pleaded not guilty. Her real name is Kimberly Kessler, born in 1968 and from Butler, Pennsylvania. She had also been using a fake social security number. And the police solved a mystery when they found out uh, who Jennifer really was. They solved a missing persons case. Kimberly Kessler was reported missing in 2012 by her mother. However, according to the report made, Kimberly was last seen on July 4th, 2004 in Butler, Pennsylvania. Wow. Her mom waited eight years to report her missing. Uh, you know how it is, you know, gotta go to the shops, you gotta cook the dinner, take out the trash. Busy woman, I'm sure she, yeah, she got to it eventually. That's Eight the important years. thing. So, Kimberly Kessler, aka Jennifer Seibert, aka 24 other names. She also lived in 33 cities across 14 states. Ants in her pants, this one. So, just so we're on the same page, Kimberly Kessler was reported missing in Pennsylvania eight years after she did go missing. She lived in Florida under the name Jennifer Seibert. She had lived all across America in that period from 2004 when she presumably did actually go missing and had two dozen other names that she lived under. 
What was she running from? What was she trying to hide from? There's a reason that they are trying to hide who they actually are. What exactly did they do? Were they involved in other crimes? So this person has either um, been involved in other crimes, um, you know, where they've stolen uh, actual papers of someone else, they have corrupted someone within a system somewhere, or they have been able to talk their way around having to provide the necessary documentation to obtain these uh, different aliases. You have the ID fraud with that number of aliases means that somebody has been doing this for a while. And the questions that come to mind for me, you know, where have they been? What have they been doing? You know, when were they there? And really trying to link all of these aliases together. Crazy. Oh, that's kind of weird. Kind of suspicious. A fugitive involved with a missing person. How many other missing people is she involved with? She was a chameleon. Right. What name do you want me to, to call you? Because I was talking to the detective that drove you up and you said I might have been calling you about it wrong. It's funny that St. John's didn't tell you. When you run, run my fingerprints through, they come mm -hmm. up as Kimberly Lee Kessler. That's about it. So I would prefer to be called Kim. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm, you know, I'm calling you. Uh, by your right but if you run them through, I mean, the last time I got picked up was back in 1999, and I bonded out, and it took them, I don't remember, it was a couple weeks, I don't know if it was two and a half weeks or three and a half weeks before they actually, you know, matched them Match up. Them up. Yeah, yeah, it did, like, but that was 1999, so maybe it was a little bit slower then, okay. but I don't know, there's, like, lots of people on the face of the planet, so maybe it still takes time, I'm not sure. And, and it may be, too, that you, since you've had this agents for, for so long, you know, it probably you, you've probably done a lot of stuff since that time, and so you've actually kind of got a, you know, you've got a history under that name, so it probably shows up in different databases and stuff like that. And that's just a guess, and maybe, maybe that's why it's, it's happening like that. There's video of you dropping her car off at the Home Depot parking lot there in Yulee. And walking across and going into the yeah, if y'all wonder why I got a big old smile on my face, I love seeing this stuff. It's because it's like it feels like we're not supposed to see this. <laughs> it feels like we're not supposed to see this. I'm like, yo, this is cool. Uh, gate station and getting a taxi cab. That's why you you know you're charged with a grand theft auto. And I'm not trying to trick you. I'm not trying to fool you. You're opening up to me, and I'm opening up to you. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the reason you're charged with that. You're not charged with anything else, okay? Um, but something happened to Joey, and you know we actually sent our sent our crime scene unit out to process um, tangles, and there was some evidence there, okay? We have also, and I don't sure think I've been fooling you. Out, you know, I just want to talk to you and get to know you a little bit because I think something. What's your name? Something, something that, that you didn't plan happened, but let me tell you what, what we did, okay? Because I just want to be honest with you, because I think something bad happened that you didn't intend to happen, but... Um, you got to love how he's wording stuff. He's very, very intentional with what it is that he's saying. He's telling her, hey, look, this is what you've been charged with, and this is the only thing that you've been charged with. That kind of almost eases her mind to make her almost want to progressively tell him things that he already knows. Now he's going into the fact that there's evidence that something might have occurred that maybe she didn't attend on occurring, but he's saying it that way to try to make her feel as though this is a safe place and that she can speak freely on everything that she knows around the disappearance of this woman. They're very intentional with their words, and I like it. I like it. It's like all these investigators are like the same people, and they're all good at it. And then, like, the way they talk to her in that room is almost as if they're cool with her. But obviously, they're not. But they make it oh, yeah, yes, yeah, you know. When Kimberly was locked up, she made a number of calls to her mother. She also is not a fan of the Illuminati. I'm sure they'll be disappointed. Or in Texas, for this, the only two states with death penalty? I don't know. I haven't done the research on it. You might want to YouTube that. Get back to me on it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd want to know and then tell you bad news, but I, <laughs> I thought someone said they weren't doing that anymore. 
I think. This is four different pictures being recycled over and over. Shouldn't do it anymore because the dumbasses get everything wrong. The prosecutors are just a giant weenie. And I'm not even going to say, well, maybe there's some that are good. No, because they're all weenies. You put on a suit and you turn into a weenie. She trusting or something on it. Like, I just thought that their BS was over. But um, mm -hmm. Tom Thompson told me today that, like, I was the front page of the newspaper. I'm all over the news. He said today they had a bunch of people calling the public defender's office a news line or date line called and just like a bunch of entities or whatever, like news channels and like we're really calling or whatever today. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, you're all over the newspaper, you're all over the news. I'm like, really? I thought things, I mean, I thought it, I know you were saying it quieted down up there and I was just assuming it quieted down down here, but I guess I'm still like the talk of the town or something. Oh, somebody told Bobby that you were in the newspaper and I, I he didn't say I just assumed it was maybe an old newspaper. He said the Sunday paper, and I wondered why the heck, why would that be starting up again? Because absolutely nothing going on in the world. Um, I say it's because it's the Illuminati. I think that um, her people definitely are fucking seriously involved in it. So that's just what is happening. At that moment, I would have been like, yep, my child is guilty. She did it. Whatever y'all saying, just throw her in the jail. She just blamed Illuminati as if Illuminati cares about her. If Illuminati is even real. They don't want this child. They don't want nothing to do with this girl and her little petty crimes. Well, they might not be so petty. So, that's what I'm thinking. Because... Just, I mean, again, I can't prove it. It's just my opinion and what little bit I've seen on YouTube about some of the research I was doing on these secret societies is, like, nobody gets even five minutes worth or five seconds worth of airtime unless they're, they have some sort of connection, so. School YouTube talking about her research. Uh -huh. YouTube University. During the subsequent investigation into what happened to Jolene, the blood that was found in the salon, it matched both Jolene and Kimberly, so there was definitely a fight, a struggle. DNA analysis then found Jolene Cummings' blood on a boot, sock, pair of scissors and storage locker that belonged to Kimberly Kessler. Former FBI agent Tony Kravitz says this evidence is key for investigators to build a timeline. Every piece of that will be an important piece of putting the story together, uh, but they will need a mountain of physical evidence because they don't have a body. New documents show Cummings blood was found on Kessler's sock and boot in her storage unit. Detectives also located Cummings fingernail inside a blue bin. More of Cummings blood was found on a pair of scissors inside Kessler's car, according to investigators. Surveillance video from behind Dick's wings shows Kessler struggling to throw out two white trash bags, indicating that the bags were heavy. Kravitz says this new evidence shows there was likely an altercation between Cummings and Kessler. Oh, to me, that's a huge indicator of a, of a very violent event. Once the case goes to trial, Kravitz feels the timeline investigators will have created will be shocking. Analyzing Kimberly's phone, they found searches like co-worker guilty of murder missing person, body not found, murderpedia, list of female serial killers, Florida female murderers. No body, no crime. Post-mortem changes. <laughs> Thought that was my search history for a second. And also in Kimberly's storage locker, they found, oh, I don't know, wigs? Six to be exact. And also a number of cell phones. Kimberly would later say she would wear wigs as disguises and change how she walked and talked to hide her identity. So, interesting woman. And we don't know what happened to Jolene. Her body has never been found, and Kimberly has admitted to jack shit. But a Nassau County grand jury indicted Kimberly before her arrest for first-degree murder based on the evidence investigators were able to find in the case. Part of that evidence included a Walmart receipt documenting the purchases of 30-gallon trash bags, an electric knife when a regular knife won't do the job, and a large bottle of ammonia. 
My my assumption was that she liquefied that body, but she had to cut it up first. That's crazy. Dead giveaway. When will criminals learn? Never keep the receipts, ever. ever. However, during Kimberly's trial just this year, mind you, in 2019, the judge determined that Kimberly Kessler was incompetent to stand trial after having doctors examine her. A couple of weeks ago, I covered the Nico Jenkins case, and he was found competent. And he's batshit. So I don't know how she's dodging it. Right. Don and Bill, she said she felt the judge had no choice but to find her incompetent after evaluations by two different doctors. She wasn't angry, more sad, as she explained that she understands sometimes justice takes time. Ann Johnson was feet away from her daughter's accused killer in court today. This is new video of Kimberly Kessler. Apparently a psychiatrist. Dang, she done lost weight. She was a big girl, now she's skinny. ...who interviewed Kimberly Kessler wrote he believes she is suffering from delusion and personality disorders and he only spoke to her for 30 minutes before she ended the session and he wasn't the first doctor to examine her he was the second one supposedly she became somewhat irate and critical of the first psychiatrist who found her not competent Does she want to be found competent during the session she ignored the psychiatrist and continued talking with her attorneys the subjects she wanted to talk about? Ah, you know, just the usual. George Washington, Masons, Secret Keys, and Religious Scriptures. And most recently, she was moved to a psychiatric hospital. She's not due to have her next hearing until January. This is truly a bizarre case, and the fact that she was found not competent. I mean, she already admitted she was like a chameleon who could... She had, you know, over two dozen other names. She traveled America, taking on new identities. So how... Truly competent is she? Maybe it's a ploy to. It's a ploy. And she did. She did really good. She did really, really good because she's competent. Get out of whatever happened to Jolene, which she has said nothing about. So we don't know what happened to the missing mother of tree. Hopefully we will. But this is a bizarre case. It's crazy to think you got these kids that are not knowing what exactly happened to their mother. They just know their mother is no longer around. Insane. Insane. Suspect really incompetent? Or is a suspect just very intelligent? She will be found competent. I arrest you. She will. She'll be found competent. You gotta believe in the judicial system. You know, she may be intelligent. You got a higher power. We got people that are fighting, fighting to working very diligently. And this is the victim's mother. For this case. And finally, thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you'd like to see some more of my videos, uh, please subscribe if you want to. And, you know, there are other videos there you can watch also if you'd like to. Whatever you're in the mood for. You know, you do you. Say so you do you. <laughs> Shout out to this man yet again for another great video. Man, this is a crazy story. What do y'all think? Y'all think she's guilty? Comment down below. Y'all know what time it is. Go ahead and just hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more. As always, the link to the original will be down in the description box below. If you haven't already, make sure you follow, follow your boy on the gram and Twitter at Artie Kicks. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. See ya. Oh,